so get a chance to get some guys healthy. And, uh, and a lot of guys you'll hear here in a minute are kind of day to day. Um, hoping to get some of those guys back for the game. We put Darius Phillips on IR, which was unfortunate. He was really playing some good football. And um, he had some loose cartilage in his knee, and, and it flared up the day after the game. And, and so the decision was made that we'll put him on IR and, you know, um, eight-week deal. And it, he'd be eligible to come back, you know, depending on how that all plays out. But we'll see where we go from there. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. No update. He's still kind of uh, progressively uh, doing some individual work today, which is good. It's a step in the right direction, but he's still still the day-to-day -day diagnosis right now. Are you optimistic that he plays this season? I mean, it's, I mean, legitimately every day we come in and wait for the next update, and um, so yeah, we're we're certainly hopeful that he'll be back. And I mean, they could tell me uh, tomorrow, the next day, that he's back. You just never know. So that's kind of how it's been this last couple weeks. Yeah, Michael Jordan's in good shape. You know, he'll he'll progress into practice today. Um, plan on him being available for the game. You know, still some decisions to be made. Bill, like we've said before, we have multiple starters at guard. Billy's played well, and so we'll see through the week. But feel comfortable with with Billy being the left guard, Mike Jordan being the left guard. But um, today, Billy will take those reps as the starting left guard at practice. Is it possible? Uh, AJ won't practice this week. He's on the rehab field this week. I watch him. Um, he's making good progress, but he will not be practicing this week. How long do you think BW Webb will be out for? I think BW Webb will play in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's. I can't say that with 100% confidence, but I think he's he's got a good chance to play. You've got a couple of corners that weren't here at the beginning of the week. Yep. How do you get guys that just joined the team in week four ready to go next week? Well, uh, Greg Mabin's, you know, played some ball in this league, and – um, Tori's played for Dronte and Lou before, so he's familiar with the schemes. And so really two guys that we feel like aren't, aren't just green guys. They can they can show up and get some playing time. And, you know, whether they're both active, one of them is inactive, BW's up. There's a lot of things that play into it, but just felt like we needed the DB depth at this point with, with DP going down. BW really, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful he'll play this week, but we still got to take it day-to-day -day with him and see how he responds to, um, you know, put his hands on people. So uh, we just felt like we needed that depth, that defensive back. If BW does play, um, do you think it would be an all-in kind of thing? Or do you, you guys use Tony and Darius in the slot? Last we'll see. I mean, we, we feel comfortable with Tony and, and the role that he's played. And so, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of take it day by day and see what the game plan entails. But um, it, it, it is, you know, pretty good news on BW. When he first did the injury, he didn't know how long it was going to be. And it sounds like he's making pretty good progress. I wouldn't say it was more than we expected. It was the amount of time we expected because we knew they were down really before the game. So um, nothing unexpected as in play time there. And hopeful that we can get some of those guys back as the week gets going. We, uh, we talked about this rivalry earlier this week, just between the Steelers and Bengals. Do you think this is um, maybe the perfect opportunity for this team to get it right on in prime time against the Steelers? It seems like your guys in there believe that it's the perfect time for that. It's as good a time as any, you know. It's uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't really matter who we were playing in week four, you know. We're we're um, we're very anxious to get another opportunity to put it all together. I think that's the best way to say it. Our guys uh, still believe that we're we're heading the right direction and we're doing the right things, and they know that it's a tough test. You know, it's prime time. Steelers, they're saying the same things in their locker room that we're saying, and you know, it's it's it, our guys will be ready to go. They're they're very anxious for this opportunity. Same feel I've always had, you know. Uh, it, it's it's still a really talented, well-coached football team. That do, that doesn't change, you know. It's so, yeah. Maybe some of the guys that are, are uh, they're really counting on haven't played in this game and haven't played a lot of ball, but they're still talented players and they're going to be put in good spots. And you know, we're going to have to put our best foot forward, or, or it's going to be a tough test for us. Why the decision to add these quarterbacks? Well, because Darius going to IR and BW Webb just still having the injury that's got. Felt like we just needed some depth. You know, you're, you're, um, you hate to say it, but you're another guy away from. We got to be ready. We got to have somebody up. So that's why we made the decision. How do you, how do you approach a prime time game? Do you like to try to focus on treating it like another game, or do you want guys to more embrace the spotlight and embrace the moment? How, what path do you feel like is best to take with approaching with a team? 
the same path. There's there's some things that just don't need to be said. It's that you feel the um, you feel the excitement in the locker room, particularly on the game day. Especially when that Monday is a long day. You know, you're used to being in the hotel on a Saturday night, and there's games on, and Sunday morning, you know, you're getting ready and you're seeing all the NFL pregame shows, and then when you play a Monday night game, it's very different. You know, you you get there on a Monday morning, and there's really you got to get out of your bed, you got to get up, you got to move around. There's no, there's soap operas on TV which you're not used to seeing, you know, and so you just get anxious all day, and then and then you finally get to the stadium. It's a night game, you know. You see all the big personalities on the sidelines, and so you do get that new sense of energy. It's not, nothing we need to talk about during the week and, or in the locker room. It, you just feel it the day of the game, and, and you know it's go time. <laughs> no, it's, I turn them off. There's nothing to watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally lost on Monday mornings. So it's something you don't have to talk about. I mean, it's just these guys have been watching their whole lives, I guess, and they know that Cameron needs to be there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's the game when you're a little kid. You begged your parents to be able to stay up, you know, so you could watch the game. And, you know, it's a, it's something that you've – I know there's a lot of primetime games going on on Thursday nights and Sunday nights and all that stuff, but Monday night football doesn't change. You know, it's guys still have that same feeling, that same excitement. It's, it's one of those games you, you dream of, of growing up and playing in, and um, it just adds to it that it's a divisional game on the road against a really good opponent. Do you remember the first time they let you stay up? I always tried to watch the Cowboys play when I was a little kid, so it's probably um, – I, I think I more remember staying up to watch the Super Bowl when the Cowboys played the Bills. I think that's – maybe I was in fifth grade, 95-ish. Um, so that's, that's kind of the first time I remember begging to stay up. I think it was when uh, – yeah, I think that was that was the Super Bowl. I think I got to halftime, and then and then the next day at school, I acted like I saw the whole game. I think it was the one where where uh, Don Beebe knocked the ball out of his hands to the end zone. It was at Liam Lett, I think it was, and uh, I acted like I'd seen it when my friends were talking about it at school. I said, "Oh yeah, 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 I saw that. That was stupid," <laughs> but but really, I had no idea what they were talking about. When you watched. No, back when you played Troy Paul Malu, that was a different defense in its entirety, you know. And so, but it's still the same. You know, they pride themselves on the physicality and being tough and, and taking the fight to the offense. That stuff doesn't change. They're big up front. Those guys are, are strong hands. They're powerful. Um, you know, they they got linebackers that can move. You know, they got they got good DBs who played a lot of good football in this league. And so it's you know you got to be ready for a. a you know, a big showdown over there because those guys are, are going to take it to you. So you got to be ready to give it right back. Does it affect preparation at all that through three weeks, the two, you guys and the Steelers have played two common opponents? Does that change? Or? Not, you know, it's you're, you're watching the other side of the ball now. And so you, it doesn't change for an offense or a defense because we're not watching the same film. You're, you're kind of seeing a team that you played, but you're watching the other side. Of the, I don't know if that makes any sense, but – um, like offensively, we're watching Seattle's defense. Well, this is really the first week that we've watched Seattle's offense. So it really doesn't help the quarterback or a linebacker that you've had that common opponent. Um, you know, it does for me because I've watched both sides. So you kind of get a chance to see some things. But really, for the most part, I wouldn't say it helps the team much. Very similar games. If you, if you look at Pittsburgh, the way their season has gone, not in the sequencing of the way our games have gone. Close game, the first one. You know, the second game wasn't very close for us. And then third game. Their games have been identical, and really their game the other day was very similar against San Francisco. They just they got the ball back at the end with a little less time than we actually had. So when we moved it down and there was 20 seconds left or whatever, they were actually a little bit more backed up against the clock on the minus 30 or whatever it was. So very similar, and there wasn't a lot of scoring in the first half. The defense kept them in it. Um, second half, they got going a little bit. They had the two big touchdowns. So it just it felt eerily similar to how our game was against Buffalo. Well, I mean, we, we're we're trying to get everybody involved, and and we we gave them the ball in those first couple drives, and unfortunately, we, you know, the, the very first play, we we're just trying to get something going, and we ended up in second and ten on what we felt like should have been an efficient play on first down, and then the first play, of the second drive, we got a penalty, um, which wasn't a penalty, um, but which put us right back in the first and fifteen. So it's it's hard to say that we should have given Joe the ball in those first two plays when we feel like we should have been in great shape. Uh, we just we we weren't, and. But again, it's, he does give us a spark. Geo gives us a spark. We feel really good about the direction of our run game and what those backs provide for us. 
we feel like we have a lot of playmakers that we need to get involved to get us going. We, we feel like really we're, we're strong at every skill position on offense. We just got to find the right um, way as a play caller to get everybody involved and give us that spark to get that first first down to get us really going. Well, I just say the consistency overall. That's that's just really what our team has lacked in each of the games. It's just consistency from drive to drive, half to half. That's that's really what we've been missing, and that equals zero wins up to this point. And so, you know, our whole team, we, we preach to them. We we just need better consistency overall. And when we get that, we really think we'll be we'll be doing things the way we want it done. I, I, I would say it's impossible to pinpoint on one person. I think we're all accountable for, for um, kind of where we're at right now in offense. He does a lot of really good things he probably doesn't get credit for. You know, he gets us into the right protections. He gets us to the right run plays. He, he makes some big throws that, um, you know, to, to, to most people, they, they don't think much of it. And they've been really impressive throws that have really helped uh, keep us alive in some moments. So. People tend to remember the ones that they think the quarterback missed, and it's just not always that case. And so he's no different than any of us. He's no different than, than me or any of the linemen or the receivers. We're all accountable for getting this thing going in the right direction. Andrew Brown seemed to have an excitement filled with an eagle. Um, he had a couple of down moments, but he also had – he looked pretty good. Has he earned another, has he earned another chance to play? Well, it, well, depending on the depth that we got, he's we kept him on the roster for a reason because um, – He's one of those guys you describe as a football player. He loves being on the field. Uh, he, he gives you some flexibility at some different positions. Uh, he played with a lot of energy. You, you, you saw a guy kind of getting his first opportunity. There was some good and some bad. But again, he's a guy that's going to continue to grow and improve. And there's there's opportunities for him. And he continues to, you know, we want him to take advantage of those opportunities. And so. Overall, the D linemen had to play too many snaps in the previous game just because we were down. We had three inactive defensive linemen. They played more than we would want them to. And overall, you'd like to have a better rotation. But unfortunately, this just wasn't the way we were able to do it last game. One more minute, please. When you all signed uh, Leroy Reynolds, what was, the, what was the impetus behind that? Where did you feel like you were going to use him the most? Well, we did know that we were really short a spot at linebacker. And so you'd like to get up to five. We carried four the first week. I know you guys are well aware of that. Um, and. He, he brings great energy. I mean, he's, he's a passionate guy. When I sit up there and meet with him, you know, in my office when we first signed him, and then you look at the way he plays on scout team, the way he runs around. I mean, he's, you got to tell him to slow down sometimes when he's going against your running backs on the scout team. But he loves to be on the field. Um, he's a guy who's played on a lot of different teams. So he sees this as this is an opportunity I got I to gotta go grab. And he played with great energy. That's, that's something a lot of guys can feed off of when a guy like that is out there running around. And so, He's only going to continue to improve in this system. I know you're immersed in your own stuff here, but it kind of feels like a holiday here in town with what's going on next door at Great American. Did you ever get a chance to meet Marty Brown? I, I uh, was trying to process what you were even talking about. Um, <laughs> no, I have not. I, I know. Uh, oh, no. I, nope, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I left last night, and uh, to be quite honest with you, my, I couldn't tell you what day it was. I saw a lot of Reds fans when I was, I don't know, what, 1030? Was the game in that late? I don't know. I just saw a lot of people and figured, oh, there must have been a game and something was going on. But um, there's more people parked in the garage than normal last night. I thought that was bizarre. But other than that, no, I, I'm, I'm in my own world. You were right about that. Pittsburgh's, just one a couple those, more, please. Pittsburgh's one of those loud stadiums, too, and the Monday night hype is going to make it even more louder. Will you be pumping the white noise as the we have to. I think anytime you're going to play in a difficult environment, you got to make sure that we're prepared. We don't take it for granted. Just because we, we, uh, we had some poise in the noise the first two road games we played in, we we can't say, all right, we got that figured out. Let's. We don't need to work on that anymore. When you're playing on the road in this division, you got to plan on, on communication being a factor. And so we got to make sure that we continue to improve on our verbal, nonverbal communication on the field. And um, so you'll you'll if you're fortunate enough, you'll get to hear that that white noise we got out there. Great question. Finishing. You know, we, we got to find a way to win. We got to find that, that killer instinct inside of us to who's going to step up and make that play. And uh, we've had the opportunities, and we, we have not been the team that stepped up in whatever phase and made that final play that, that puts the dagger in the opponent. And so that's that's the difference in winning and losing. And we're 0 3. We own it. 
we got to create our own opportunities. And, you know, when the game's on the line, whether it's this game, the next game, whatever it is, someone's got to step up and, and be the one that finishes the job for us. Thank you all.